Hello. So in the previous activity, in the previous video, we saw how we could use the inverse Euler formula to compute the spectrum for a sum of sinusoids without having to resort to the Fourier series integral. Can you use that in more complex scenarios? Like, for instance, if you have a product of sinusoids, and this comes up, for instance, in amplitude modulation. So you have a mathematical expression, x of t, well defined like in this case, and you have a product. We could use the Fourier series, meaning to compute the ak coefficients, we do 1 over t0 integral from 0 to t, x of t, we plug the sine 5t, 5 pi t, time cosine of pi t, like what we have here, times e to the minus j omega kt, and compute that integral. But that's much harder than actually using the inverse Euler formulas here to convert the sinusoids to complex exponential signals, multiply them out, and actually come up with the line spectra without having to do the Fourier series. And we are going to do that in this example. Now, remember, all this spectral analysis that we are doing is mathematical. You need to have a mathematical expression for later in the course, and perhaps more important for practical applications, in most real-world situations, you do not have a mathematical analytical expression. You do not have it for temperature. You do not have it for speech. You do not have it for sound. You do not have it for images. You do not have it for the stock market or financial time series. What do you have instead? You have samples. You have numbers. And if those samples have been quantized, then we are going to be able to use the digital Fourier transform and a fast algorithm to compute it without you ever having to do the mathematics. Now, this background is good because it enables you to establish the foundation for the concepts in the digital domain that we will see later on. So with that, let's start doing finding the spectrum of this signal without having to do the Fourier series. So x of t, our step number one is to write each one of the sinusoids using the inverse Euler formula. This is equal to 1 half e to the j 2 pi, and since I want to plot the spectrum in hertz, I'm going to already do the 2 pi times 2.5. So you have a 2.5 hertz t j minus 1 half e to the minus j 2 pi, 2.5 hertz t. So that's our sine component. And I just use the inverse Euler formula for the sine. In a previous video, we derived this formula. Times 1 half, let's convert the cosine pi t, e to the j 2 pi 0 0.5 hertz t plus 1 half e to the minus j 2 pi 0 0.5 t. And now we are just going to expand it, meaning multiply each one of the components. And so we have this component times, say, this component. And so one half times one half is one fourth j e to the j 2 pi, and you're going to add the 2.5 hertz and the 0 0.5 hertz, so you're going to give me the 3 hertz, 3t, that's the first component, minus, I'm going to do this other multiplication here, I get 
one half j times one half gives me one fourth e to the minus j two pi two point five minus two point five minus zero point five gives me the minus three. I did it in this order because you can see that this already is a cosine, one half cosine of 2 pi 3t. Plus, now let's go ahead and multiply this component here, cross one, actually I'm going to do it in another line. One half j, one fourth j, e to the j two pi, and now we have two point five hertz minus zero point five hertz, and so that's two hertz, two point five minus zero point five t, and the other cross component minus one fourth j e to the minus two pi. 2.5 hertz plus 0.5 hertz gives me minus 2. And so this, not that we have to do it, I mean, we can already plot the spectrum. This is equivalent to, let me just write it, therefore, as having a one, actually, let me just do the, the phases first. 1 over 4j, what is j? j is equal to, if you think about it, in the complex plane, let's actually do it, real, imaginary, we have here, 1 over j is equal to minus j, and so we are talking about here, something like this. How do we express that? Is e to the minus j, if this is 0, pi, pi over 2, minus pi over 2, pi over 2. And so this is equal to 1 fourth e to the minus j pi over 2, e to the j 2 pi 3t, minus one half e to the minus, sorry, e to the positive. In this case, we have the minus j, the one over j becomes minus j, minus times minus minus gives me there a positive. So this is plus j pi over two e to the minus j two pi three t plus, one half e to the minus j pi over two e to the j two pi two t same thing one over j becomes minus j minus and minus is going to give me a plus so one fourth e to the j pi over two e to the minus j 2 pi 2 t. Can plot the spectrum now. This is frequency in hertz. And to put here 1 hertz, 2 hertz, 3 hertz, 4 hertz, 5 hertz. That's going to be enough. Minus 1. Minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, minus 5. And so what do we see? We see a, a component at 3 hertz with an amplitude of 1 fourth. So we have a component there. So we have the component at 3 hertz, 
here. And we have also one at minus 3 hertz. And then we have a component at 2 hertz. And we have a component at minus 2 hertz. Now, we also have the amplitudes of each one of those. So, let's write them down. One-fourth with an angle of minus pi 2 and one-fourth with an angle of pi 2 and one-fourth with an angle of minus pi 2 and one-fourth with an angle of pi over 2. without having to use the Fourier series integral. Now, how do we do that? Basically transforming the multiplication of those sinusoids into a problem like the previous problem, a sum of sinusoids using the inverse Euler formula. In fact, what you see here, this is just what? x of t equals one-half cosine of two pi 3t minus pi over 2. This other one is plus 1 half cosine of 2 pi 2t minus pi over 2. And we are in the previous activity. Now, this problem is relevant when you're multiplying sinusoids. It's useful for amplitude modulation. In fact, this type of modulation that we have seen here is what, what's called a double sideband suppressed carrier modulation. I'm going to go over that in the next activity. Thank you.